Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace, and today is Monday, August 22nd. I couldn't remember what date it was. I thought I could remember. I knew it was pretty far in August because August is almost over. This is a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly, knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day. I have various social medias that you can follow me on. Um, I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Ravelry. I am most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there and you can see what I get up to during the week. Um, I also have show notes, so links to things that I will be talking about will be linked there. If you are on YouTube, the link to my blog is down below, or if you are on my blog already, everything is already there. Um, I also work at a yarn shop. It is called Pearly Girls. It is in Spring, Texas, and I will link, I will link all the... Um, social media, website information. We do have an online store, all the various places. If you like us, check us out either online or in person. We would love either or both. Um, we have a lot to talk about. Um, we have a finished object um, and just a lot of progress on a lot of things, which is really kind of incredible because it's been kind of a crazy couple, couple weeks. A crazy couple. It's been busy and I feel like my knitting has been a little low, but we're just gonna keep on going. I'm also knitted in a different location. We'll talk about that in just a moment. My hair is looking particularly frizzy today. Yay! It's really humid and it's hot, but it has been raining, so we are grateful for that. Um, if you would like to grab something tasty to drink, something to snack upon, something to crap upon, an animal snuggle, laundry to fold, I hope that you cannot hear the laundry that is going right now. We are closer to the laundry room, so um, I apologize if you can hear that, but we're not gonna dwell on that too much. We can do what we gotta do. I'm sorry. Um, maybe you're on your lunch break. Whatever it is, I hope it is bringing you joy. I hope that it is bringing you rest, if that's what you are having, or I can help you get through a task that you are not too excited about because goodness knows we all have those. I have many to do later. And I'm going to also have a fun one of making cookies. I'm excited about that, and I wanted to do that all weekend, didn't have time, and now is my chance. So, I have an iced coffee that has lasted me uh, pretty much all morning, which is really wonderful. I made a, a, a larger one than I normally do, so it would last me. Go me. Um, it was very good forethought on my part and <laughs> you can do all of those things none of those things and you can join me for some crafty chat <sighs> I'm sitting on a couch I'm sitting on our old couch what we got a new couch it's so exciting if you follow me on Instagram and if Instagram so chose to show you my story because we all know that the algorithm is just a big mess. Um, if you happen to see my story <laughs> over the weekend, you would know that we got a new couch, which is just really exciting. It was um, kind of spontaneous, but also not spontaneous at the same time. Um, we've been thinking about getting a new couch. This couch that I'm currently sitting on was the couch that we had. I've had it since college. It's from Ikea. It has lived a wonderful life. It is still going strong. It'll be here for the foreseeable future. Um, and just right over here is my yarn wall. But there is, as you can imagine, because we have gotten a bigger couch, um, things have had to be rearranged and moved around and stuff in here had to be rearranged and moved around to make space for the couch and so stuff that was normally not in front of the yarn, war yarn wall where I normally record is now there. So I didn't really feel like I had the energy nor did I really want to move everything in order to sit in front of the yarn wall. Um, so here we are on the couch and I've tried to decorate with some yarn. So, <laughs> that is my explanation. Again, you do what you gotta do. I'm sorry, I don't really know what to tell you. This is just where we are today, so. And that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the exact same every single week. That is just, this is how it is, so. Anyway, 
I have had, um, things have been busy. Uh, it has come to the end of the summer recording. Things are still really busy for me, so I, in theory, am going to continue to stretch this recording every other week until the end of September, um, just because I have a lot going on, and I, um, knitting-wise and also in non-knitting world stuff, I just want to make sure that I have enough time for everything, so... We're gonna just push this on, recording every other week. The goal is to get back to once a week, but right now we're just gonna push it till the end of September. I apologize again, I'm sorry, but you do what you gotta do, and I have a lot of progress to show you, so there is that. Um, let's see, what else is there to talk about? We wanna talk about the weather. We have been getting rain. It's overcast right now. Um, there's rain in our forecast, which is very exciting. Um, it's still hot, but not as hot, so that's nice. Um, it's still humid. will always be humid. Although, now that we're getting to the end of August, everyone, I know I'm not the only one, but, like, can you not stop thinking about fall and, like, pumpkin spice and pumpkins and flannels and leaves, although the leaves don't really change or fall from the trees here like they do other places, but in theory, I like the idea of that. It just doesn't happen where I live. Um, all the fun fall things. It's the end of August. Basically, September will be here before we know it, and I know September is going to be a busy month. And it will be October before we know it, and I don't even know what's happening in October because I don't know. I'm sure we'll start making plans for October because that just seems how things are going. It's just a busy time, you know? It's just a busy time. So let's get talking about knitting. I've got so much to talk about. The nice thing about sitting on the couch is that everything is just like strewn on the couch that you can't see. It's quite messy. I have limited this uh, in frame. That's the technical term I'm looking for. The frame to look very nice, clean, and pristine. It is not. It is not. It's very messy over there, over there, over there, over there, over there. It's very messy. So I'm not going to show it because we just, let's acknowledge it's, it's uh, very messy. And just a reminder that things are way more than what you see on camera. You know, I'm, what, is this a spam text message? Yes. Okay, don't have time for that. I do have a finished object, everyone. I have a finished object. And that is my Rift T by Jacqueline Seaslack. And it's not really a tee because I chose to make the long sleeve, so it's the re rift what? The rift top. I was thinking rift and said tee combined with rift. Um anyway, so this is super exciting. It has not been blocked yet. I understand that these sleeves look absolutely tiny and my arms are not that tiny, but it does stretch, and um, there we have this very nice, like, ribbing on the bottom, which kind of, like, makes it curl in somehow, so it looks smaller than it actually is. But again, blocking, it'll be fine. It's my sweater. I have knit it to how I want to wear it. So, um, we have a, um, High low hem, as you can see, it's shorter in the front than it is in the back. Mine is relatively cropped. We also have these slip or these uh, this ribbing detail along the side of the body as well. Um, I have chosen to do the V neck in the front and the bow neck in the back. I am not going to do the neckline of picking up around the stitches because I'm actually very happy with how this looks. So, and. Yeah, so I'm just very happy with how this has turned out. It went by super quickly. Um, I know that if I had just been working on this 
just by itself, it would have been done a long time ago. But we all know that was not possible for me. <laughs> We have grandiose thoughts and plans and they never come to pass and that's okay, that's okay. I did knit um, most of this while visiting my parents. I got the yarn. Let's talk about the yarn. The yarn is I um, got from Maker and Stitch, which is my mom's local yarn shop in Edwards, Colorado. It's very wonderful. Um, this is a new to me yarn dyer and they had just gotten a box of her yarn, which is super exciting. Um, uh, her name or her yarn business is called the Conifer Collective. She's also based out of Colorado, so that's very special um, to be knitting with a Coloradian. Color yeah, Coloradian. I think that's the right word. Term, whatever. This is called Desert Cardinal. And um, I'm very, actually very pleased with the lighting in this particular position, so. I love it. I got two skeins and I used an entire, uh, the, uh, a little bit more than the entire first skein for the body. And then I used um, more than half of, or I mean, it wasn't really a ton ultimately, but um, it was still, I still have yarn left over to do both the sleeves. So that's really awesome. Um, if I had wanted to make it longer, obviously I probably would have come closer to running out of yarn, but I didn't, which is very exciting because I have um, some brown, beautiful yarn that I've been saving for a very long time. It was a uh, lockdown purchase. Uh, can we remember those? Those were, seem like forever ago. Um, and uh, I got them with the Rift top tee in mind and knowing that I can get away with one full one with the long sleeves with just two skeins because um, I know that the yard is, just, is roughly the same um, probably do that too because it's a beautiful brown and it's like it's got a coffee related name and I don't remember what it is but so good so good anyway so this needs to be blocked most of my ends are woven in. Um, I'm super excited to be able to wear this, hopefully soon, relatively. Um, I know that it's still probably gonna be hot for a while, but um, it is lightweight enough, so there's that. There's that. It's a very open weave. Um, I knitted it on an eight. What is this? What is this? Is this a pulled stitch? I think it is a pulled stitch. That's okay. Just even that out right there. All done. Um, so yeah, my Rift Tea by Jacqueline Seaslack out of the Conifer Collective yarn. And of course, everything will be linked in my show notes, so if you're interested in any of it, you can check it out. So that is, um, a wonderful finished object. I, um, powered through the second sleeve. I think that was all I had left, uh, last time I talked about this. And um, I've been working on two things for people, one of which is, is a secret testament, so I cannot share with you, but I'm very excited um, about it. It's going very well, um, just plugging along. And the other thing is also very exciting. I for completely forgot to talk about this last time because I didn't have the yarn yet or I was getting ready to start it or something. Um, and I now have made so much progress on it because it was really all I was working on, this and the secret one for the first week after recording last time. So then this week I was like, okay, <laughs> I need, I'm gonna need to record. I can't just say I've worked on these two things and one of them I can't show you because that would just not be a good time for anybody. <laughs> that would make it for a very boring podcast. Um, so, if you have watched this podcast for any amount of time, you probably have heard me talk about um, my friend and yarn dyer, Heather of Heathered Handmaids. I've knit with her yarn quite a lot. Um, she's wonderful. She is going to be vending at DFW Fiber Fest this year, which is in September. Um, and I will be there as well with my mom and sister. Um, side note, I will have pins if you want to meet me. I would love to meet you as well. 
if you'd like a pin, I can give you a catnip podcast pin. Um, say hello, all that jazz. I would love that. Um, so Heather's going to be there, which is super exciting. I'm so um, excited for her. And she is going to be debuting her... I think she may have a couple of new bases, but this one in particular is her cashmere sock base. And um, so as you can imagine, obviously it has cashmere in it. It's super squishy. It is amazing. I am knitting a sample for her. I am knitting <laughs> the Current Mood Shawl by Leslie Ann Robinson or Knit Graffiti. Um, she actually will also be at DFW. I believe she's teaching. So this is just a um, on the bias wrap with brioche and a little bit of feather and fan, which has been fine. I know um, it's not my favorite, nor am I very good at it, but we are keeping it together because I don't have time for mistakes and ripping back and it's all fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what I have uh, worked on. I got this done, this amount done in like a week, maybe a little bit more than a week. Um, and I'm pretty proud of myself. I finally do have the pattern memorized. I did not for the longest time and I don't know what it was about the pattern. The, it's not that the pattern was a problem or anything like that. I just could not wrap my mind around the brioche stuff and I was like, I can't fall into a rhythm. Um, it's relatively frustrating for me, but I got there in the end. I'm over halfway at this point um, and it's just super exciting. So we've got these brioche sections as you can see and then some striped feather and fan and then just a solid feather and fan. Um, for the color transitions. So it's got three colors. I believe Heather will be having kits. So if you are, are interested, definitely keep your eyes peeled. So this is one color. This is Be Teal My Heart, which may sound familiar because I'm actually knitting my Weekender light out of this color, but in her uh, regular sock base. Is it the sock base or is it the tweed base? No, it's a sock base. Um, so this is her cashmere one. This is BTO My Heart. Also knitting with graphite. Ooh, can I hold all three together? And then this is Lime Sherbert. And I'm just loving how squishy everything is. It is just so squishy. And yeah, just plugging along. I am, uh, there are six sections in total, and I am over halfway with the fourth section, so doing mighty well with that. I am very excited. So that's really all I worked on last week. This and the secret one um, both roughly have the same deadline. That being said, obviously this one has to be done before DFW because <laughs> it's a sample for DFW. So um, so if you're gonna be there and you see it, you will know that I did that, which is pretty cool. I know I would think that was pretty cool if I saw someone uh, that I watch and seeing something that they knit, that'd be pretty cool. Um, anyway, that's a random thought. Uh, so, got a lot of progress done. The other secret one is due at the end of September, but I am also over halfway with that. Um, and I would also like to have that done before DFW. Um, if not blocked and everything and pictures, but for sure uh, the knitting part. Which is also super, super easy. Um, and uh, it's a collab between a yarn dyer and a designer and it's just really wonderful and super exciting um, so I can't wait for you all to see what it looks like so yes where do we go from here I don't know there's just so much to talk about this is living in my happy bag to help keep me motivated and excited and also it needed I needed like a sturdy bag for these balls of yarn because they're so squishy I don't want them to like
collapse on themselves because yes I am a pull from the middle person that's what I prefer it is completely personal preference there are pros and cons to both pulling from the inside and pulling from the outside I completely understand that and respect everyone's decision it also may depend on um, the type of fiber that you're netting with totally understandable I know I have made those um, I can't think of the word right now Mm, I keep thinking of comparisons and that is definitely not the word that I'm thinking of or trying to think of. Anyway, I pull from the middle. <laughs> Long story short. Um, so let's, uh, what do we talk about next? I don't know. Let's do this. So I have been able to work on my Ela cardigan or Ella. E-L-A-H by Isabel Kramer. I'm knitting this out of um, Nightshades from Harrisville Designs. Um, this is still, this is maybe my second skein, I think, actually, not my first. Um, in the static colorway, I believe. Um, I also got this from Maker & Stitch. If you have not caught on by now, I do love them quite a lot. <laughs> this is in my um, pineapple yarns bag, which I love so much. It is just the sweetest thing. And the sweater is definitely too big for this bag at this point, but I am still stuffing it in there because I want to continue using it for this project. Um, also because I am lazy and haven't found a bigger one, even though there are plenty that I have available to me. Um, real talk. <laughs> but also it's cute and I want to keep using it. Anyway, let's move on. This is my Ella Ela cardigan by Isabel Kramer. I have continued on with this these lace panels on the front. I've got my applied uh, neckline as we knit down. Um, I have knit a good I think I measured last night, I'm up to around seven inches, slightly less than seven inches than um, of the body. Obviously I have my armholes here um, and it's plain stockinette on the back. So we're being blown out completely here, but that's okay. I love working with this yarn. It is just so wooly and squishy and it smells amazing. It smells so wooly, and the stitch definition is just insane. I understand that this is black yarn, and it is very hard to see, but <laughs> it is there. The stitch definition is there. Um, we also have an applied I-cord edging, which is super cool. It looks very nice and very clean and polished alongside the ribbing. Have I messed up on it? Yes. But uh, it looks fine. <laughs> we won't look too closely. Um, I tried to fix it when I uh, caught myself messing it up. So, yes. This is very interesting construction. You do like the front and the front and then you do the, you pick up and cast on for the back and all that kind of stuff and then you knit um, the back for a certain amount of time and then you join everything together and it's kind of like a little bit of um, <laughs> wrapping a package almost. <laughs> um, there's a lot of folding involved. <laughs> it's really not that bad. I'm making a joke. It's really not that complicated at all. Once you get it all situated, it becomes very apparent what you're supposed to do. So I am loving this. It is super exciting. Um, I do not have this lace pattern memorized. Um, I do believe that this is only charted instructions. Um, so, yes, that is a thing. Um, I, excuse me, mm -hmm. ooh, I apologize. Um, yes, it's just been, it's one of those projects that I know that I can make a lot of progress on in a very short amount of time because I'm knitting this, these are like eights or something, maybe nines. Yeah, these are eights. And, um, we love a good instant gratification moment. We love 
making progress and feeling good about ourselves. <laughs> Especially when you've been only working on two things for a week and um, you need podcast content. So if we just rip through um, some stuff on big needles. I did get more like almost two inches knit, which is pretty good, pretty good. I feel really good about that. Um, that's where I was last time. So we're gonna move this now. This is a little progress keeper from Little Bitty Delights. Um, it was wonderful. We're gonna move that. Okay. This is my Eula cardigan by Isabel Kramer out of Harrisville Designs Nightshades. We're gonna snub it back in the bag, but it doesn't really fit. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> You do what you gotta do, okay? You do what you gotta do. It's fine. I did forget, I do have yarn acquisitions and I do have a bag acquisition and I'm so excited. And a stitch marker um, to show. Because Pearly Girls had their three year shop anniversary this past weekend. It was super exciting, we had fun stuff. We had three trunk shows. Um, and so I got some stuff and I'm very excited to show you. So, moving right along, I also very quickly, this is very, we won't talk about this for too long, I did make progress on my sock, which is very nice, yay. Um, I did finally turn the heel, I also finally, did I have the heel flap knit last time we chatted? I don't remember. Um, either way, I have now uh, turned my heel. And we've picked up for everything, and we are now going to start shaping the gusset, which is just super easy peasy. I am doing the vanilla sock pattern on Nine Inch Circulars by the Crazy Sock Lady. Nine Inch Circulars is my um, new favorite way to knit socks. I would highly recommend it if you have never tried it. It does take some adjustment, um, but it just, it's so easy and it's just such a great way to whip through socks, but again, more personal preference. Sock knitting is very unique to you and you as the knitter and there's no right or wrong way to knit a sock, just as long as you're knitting a sock, if that is your goal, that's all that really matters. My personal favorite way is nine new circulars. I am using mustache yarns in the Daily Eggs colorway and it's obviously self-striping. We love it so much. I have picked out a random um, mini skein from somewhere that was unnamed um, for my cuff, heel, and eventually toes. So, love this. Here is this ball of yarn for one. So, doing mighty fine with that. Um, I I don't remember when, when I did that. I know that like sometimes if I really, I don't burn myself out necessarily, but if I work on one thing for a long period of time or if I only have like two things that are in rotation, I definitely, my mojo suffers a little bit. <laughs> I am not necessarily um, super inspired, even though I love the things that I'm working on. This is not um, any badness towards the the things that I've been working on, but uh, I need to have some more rotation in there, um, which props to monogamous, mon yeah, monogamous knitters. I think I said that correctly. I could have said that incorrectly. I don't know. People who work on one project at a time, or only two, or whatever, props to you. That does not work for me, um, and it's not even that I like just like casting things on. And it, that's literally not even that. I can I get bored, and I my mojo, my knitting creativity and inspiration literally goes down if I'm just working on one or two things. And again, that's nothing against the, the projects that I'm working on. It's just that I like to mix it up. So there was one day, um, and it might have been at the start of uh, last week, um, when I was like, I need 
pod podcast content as well, so this is a good excuse for me to knit on other things. I pulled out several projects that um, were not these two projects for people and uh, set a timer, rotated through, felt really good about myself. It was much better, felt a lot more excitement <laughs> about things in general. And um, the sock was the first thing that I worked on and I remember working on it and having my timer going and being like, and thinking in my mind, like, you are wasting time, you need to get these things done, why are you knitting on this sock? Why are you doing this? Why are you rotating through projects that you know would make you happy? Why are you wasting time? And I was like, I would, this is, this is not good. <laughs> um, this is a sign that things are not in a good place. Um, <laughs> I'm not wasting time. Resting and doing things that bring you joy is not a waste of time. Not a waste of time. They are just as important and just as productive as doing things, ticking things off your to-do list. They are just as important. Let me say that again. Resting and doing things that bring you joy is just as important and productive as doing things and taking things off your to-do list. There are plenty of times that I feel this way, but this particular moment, I was like, wow, the voice in my head is very loud today and it is telling me that I am wasting so much time by knitting on things that are bringing me joy and this is a problem so I'm going to work against that we're gonna like try and shut this down and then I worked on a bunch of other things I got so much done I was so excited and I felt really good so here's a friendly, here's a friendly reminder again resting is important Doing things that bring you joy is important. It doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. That's still a big chunk of time. Five minutes, 10 minutes, two minutes, anything. Just take a break. Just take a break. Do something, walk outside, have a glass of water. I haven't drank enough water today. Have you? I know I need to drink more water. <laughs> Anyway, all that to say, that kind of thing is important. And it happens to everybody, and that is why I work on multiple things at once, is because I need that for how I craft for myself. And everyone crafts differently, and everyone crafts their own unique way, and that's also wonderful and beautiful, and that's okay. It's just my personal experience. Maybe you relate to that, maybe you don't. Um, but if you do relate to that, I hope that that is encouraging to you. And I would hope, okay, I got no progress on that. Um, so we are not gonna talk about it. What is in this? Oh, that is an empty project bag. Do we have any needles in there that need to be removed? Sorry, that was a quick subject change. There are no needles in there. Um, Okay, so we talked about those two things, and the sample and the finished object. Okay, so I did also work on this, which is very exciting. This was very much like, it was in the back of my mind, because I hadn't worked on it forever, and I was like, I keep thinking about this, and I know that I cast this on, and I have like hardly any progress done on it, and I can't stop thinking about it. I have the pattern open on my Kindle tablet thing. I keep thinking about it because I keep seeing the pattern being open. I'm just going to work on it. So I did. And that, my friends, is my Rain or Shine Shawl by Stephen West. And wow, I've got so much done on this thing. It ha All this happened in like less than 24 hours. It was great. I'm so excited. I cannot even with my colors. I am just like, this is everything I wanted this shawl to be. The vibe, the, the color mood. This is, not to toot my own horn, but I did really good with this. <laughs> I'm 
want to pat myself on the back for this. I'm so proud. It's just so beautiful. And granted, it's the pattern. The pattern is also beautiful. The yarn is beautiful. I'm using Knitting for All of Merino. So last time I probably showed it to you, I may have actually frogged it and restarted because I wasn't happy with my color placement the first time. And then I redid it and it's just so perfect. I can't even. So, <laughs> and now I have mohair everywhere in my mouth, which is a hazard of knitting with mohair and will be a hazard of wearing this, I do understand, but. So this is two strands of mohair held together to knit this beautiful squishy thing. You have five colors or however many few or more colors than that that you want because we all know Stephen West and that's just how his patterns work. And you hold one strand of one color with the other strand or with another strand of another color. So consequently, you are marling everything and it's just so soft I mean it's literally soft but also the color colors are so soft and the color changes are so soft I don't even know if you can tell that it's marled um, it's very hard to tell or from what I can see on the camera maybe you can but I just think it is just so beautiful I am doing a small version instead of doing uh, of getting like two balls of each color um, because that's what you would need for the knitting for olive ones because I believe they are just um, this is not that is for my um, um, oh no this is it these are 25 grams so instead of having 50 grams her color I just have 25 so I'm gonna make a, a little mini version because it's gonna be big anyway because the if you look at the measurements of the finished the, the full size one it's huge it's like a blanket and it will be just so beautiful and I know people who are making the big size version there are several of us at pearly girls who are making it right now the big ones will be beautiful the small ones will be beautiful everyone's color combinations are so much fun um, and yeah, so here are my colors individually, um, which uh, so good and it's creating this and I am just so over the moon. I, it's one of those shawls that unfortunately and it's really not a bad thing. It's just a like, you just gotta trust your gut type thing. You have to do a couple of repeats into this pattern before you like can fully see your colors start to play together. And it's just the fact of the matter. Like you can't just do like up to there or whatever and be like, oh, that's clearly what it's gonna look like. Like, it's just very apparent. I don't know if I like that or not. You have to do a couple of repeats in and to see how everything will look together and if you want to switch around your colors or not. So it's so good. So good. Super easy to memorize. I don't need the pattern anymore. It's just super mindless. Um, so easy. And Yes, I'm currently knitting this on a size 16 inch needle. <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm actually really enjoying it knitting on a size 16 inch needle. So we may keep it on there for a while. Um, I know it's gonna get significantly bigger. I'm just knitting until I run out of yarn, basically. And I uh, do not have a problem of knitting and like not having enough yarn to cast off because I have plenty of colors of mohair that would work um, and be complimentary. And I actually think I have another skein of this maroon from another testament that I did earlier this year. So, and obviously I know where to get more. <laughs> so that's pretty handy, but that is my goal. I'm just gonna knit until I run out of yarn and I'm just having a grand old time. Um, it was very funny, I did bring this with me to 
knit on in church yesterday because yes I do knit in church um, it helps me pay attention I knit in college I knit in school I knit in church um, and everyone is very entertained by that and they always ask me about my knitting it's really great anyway um, <laughs> so I was sitting there knitting um, and I again had these thoughts of wow you're wasting time you're not working on these things that have hard and fast due dates and like due dates that you are moving up for yourself I thought that when I put the the yarn in my bag to take to church when I brought the rain or shine shawl I was like you really need to be knitting on something else you know you need to be working on this other thing but I didn't and it was so great and I like had such a good time and <laughs> the knitting wise I got so much done and what was also funny because it's mohair I don't know why this is funny I also don't know really know I don't know really why I'm telling you this but it's just we're just hanging out here you know this is just like we would normally be talking if you were sitting in the chair over there so <laughs> that's my goal with this podcast um and so I was sitting there I was working on this mohair thing and the we have we currently meet in a school and there are like big windows up higher up on the walls and so there was a bunch of rain coming so the, the sun was coming in and out and why is this important I don't know I was working on the shawl as I said many times and for some reason like just the way that the sun would shine on my knitting where we were sitting in the congregation like it would just it, it illuminated all the the mohair fuzz coming off of my project <laughs> and I was like goodness gracious this thing is shedding like nobody's business and I'm afraid that the shedding will be distracting <laughs> like normally uh people know that I knit and they're not distracted by my knitting I if I'm knitting in a public place like that I I try not to be distracting but the mohair fluff was just everywhere <laughs> and I was worried <laughs> that I would uh, the mohair fluff would be a distraction for the people sitting behind me which we were in the back anyway so it really didn't matter ultimately no one cared but I was the, with the sun shining and illuminating the, the mohair fuzz that was coming off of the shawl that was not sticking to my pants the one time that we wanted or I wanted it to like stick to my clothing it wasn't and it was just flying everywhere <laughs> and that is my story about mohair fuzz in church being illuminated by the sun fun fact it's just very entertaining to me I was amused Anyway, that's the problem I'm getting with mohair. It just, it sheds. It will shed, it will continue to shed. Um, but it's so soft and so squishy and I'm so excited to be able to wear this thing again because these colors are just exactly what I wanted. So good. I think I hear thunder. That's nice. I love that for us. And our recording. Um, so I'm going to save my uh, acquisitions for the end and I'm going to talk about this big thing that I haven't pulled out in forever. So, you know, um, if you have been a long time viewer you may recognize this because I have not talked about this in a long time. This is my advent calendar project for 2021 which is Wavy Wiggles. I'm in the middle of the row. I do apologize. I did have plans to not be in the middle of the row, but um, I think I'm actually just gonna knit back really quickly. Quickly, We'll see how fast this takes me. Um, so we'll just talk about it for right now. I am working on uh, the Wavy Wiggles shawl by Stephen West. Um, my advent calendar from last year, one of them, because I did two, one of them, this one in particular, is the Boho Chic advent calendar from Lavender Loon, which I loved so much. The, the It's such a fun color palette. It's very Boho Chic. 
very, the name is definitely very fitting. Um, the dryer has started beeping, so I do apologize. We're gonna have to do some editing in and out, but we'll just power through because we do what we gotta do. Um, I would like to get this done before November um, because that's when advent calendars start showing up. I'm doing um, a new, a big one, a 24 day one from Sweet Sparrow Yarns, which I am so excited about. Um, I have followed her and her yarn dyeing journey for a very long time. She has the most beautiful, like, yarn aesthetic and just style and everything. And I'm so excited to be able to do her advent calendar this year. Um, my mom is also doing that one. And, uh, then I am also doing a 12-day one, which I've never actually done a 12-day um, advent calendar, which is very exciting, and it is Anne of Green Gables themed, which I don't think I've spoken too much about that, about Anne of Green Gables on the podcast, but Anne of Green Gables and, um, Lucy Maud Montgomery is very, very near and dear to my heart. It is very special to me, and so I'm so excited to be able to do this advent calendar. I saw this, um, ooh, and now I can't remember who's doing it. That's sad. I need to remember that. I saw it being advertised on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I need that. I need that so much. That would just make oh, my heart so happy. So... I don't have patterns planned. I don't have um, really any idea what I'm doing <laughs> yet, but it is only the end of August. It will be fine, although I did just talk about how it will be October before we know it, but that's fine. I mean, patterns are easy to get. It's not like I have to plan ahead. And we all know um, the people who, um, they're all the designers will be coming out with their like advent calendars, countdown calendars, mini skein projects, designs will be coming out, um, uh, and flurries, flurries, what flurries? A lot of them will be coming out at once um, because we just know that's just how it goes. It happens every year. The cat has decided to emerge from the bedroom. The cat loves our new couch, which is really great. Um, and the couch is a little bit higher than our old one, and he is very capable of jumping up and uh, up onto it and off of it, which we are very proud of him, considering his age. So that is very good. <laughs> um, side note. Anyway, I'll probably wait and see what kind of patterns are released um, around the November, October, November time, getting ready for um, these um, advent calendar, countdown calendar season, um, which is super exciting. I do have things saved that I collected over the years and stuff that I've just like saved as advent. I have a folder on my Instagram of just like advent calendars I want to look into in the future or patterns that I think would be good or just in general um so I'm excited I'm still not through this row I, I'm very sorry I'm very close we just got that much left I'll just keep on talking um <laughs> um obviously I did not get this done in time for uh being able to finish with a uh, uh, mini skein at number 24 on the 24th, but that's okay. Um, I had no intention of getting it done then. Uh, last year, we were in the process of buying our house and looking for our house, and that was a lot. And we, um, it's kind of crazy to think about. There's just a lot going on. Um, Ooh, man, that was that was a very stressful time. Um, so I obviously did not get this shawl done and 
I wasn't planning to because there was just a lot going on and I, I know we'll be busy with just lots of fun things this year so I am not one who is like gotta get things done the day of things can continue on um, throughout the year obviously I did this last year or the year before that with my um, dotted rays shawl with my pineapple lemon calendar I got that done like in maybe May I think no oh I think it was May because then we went on a um, a trip and I took pictures uh, at this fun Airbnb that we stayed at and that was before I started work at Pearly Girls which was in June so it had to have been in May hmm we can count back I just hit my, my glasses I'm so close to being done it's getting very dark outside I think I just got a weather notification on my phone that's exciting um, anyway, so uh, I'm still working on this Wavy Wiggles row. I'm very sorry. I did have every intention to get this done for recording and did not have time. Um, didn't slash didn't remember. I, I stopped last night while um, we are, we just finished the Gilmore Girls and we have immediately started restarted the Gilmore Girls because it is 110% my comfort TV show and I just love it and Sam loves it too which is wonderful um, this will be my fourth or fifth time through um, so I'm not done with my row I'm so sorry we just sat there very awkwardly and I'm getting a scam call Bye bye. Um, anyway, so wavy wiggles, here we are. <laughs> um, this is a bunch of short rows. This is a lot of uh, massive yarn overs, as we can see, hence the, um, I guess there's no wavy wiggles, doesn't imply like big whole things anyway. Um, so we've got big yarn overs. We do have wavy wiggles. Um, one side is shorter than the other, obviously. Here's the other side. I've just been, there's no method to my um, using up the mini skeins. Obviously at the beginning your rows are shorter. So you do kind of have to figure out like how much you're gonna do of each mini skein. Um, otherwise you're gonna like have too much of the shawl knit with just one color and then it's just gonna get really, get too long. So, you gotta plan out the beginning, but there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's really just change whenever you want to. But when your rows get longer, you are more apt to finish a whole mini skein before you are able to move on to the next thing, which is really wonderful because that means you have fewer ends and uh, random balls of yarn, which although we don't mind that at all because we do love a good scrappy project here, um, they do take up space. So, Wavy Wiggles by Stephen West out of the Boho Chic um, Advent Calendar by Lavender Loon. I have about eight more mini skeins. <laughs> Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I um, had to completely reteach myself what I was doing in this in this shawl because before I had it all figured out. Um, oh, I had my stitch marker in here. I want to talk about. Um, and like, how could I tell what I was doing without looking at the pattern and like being able? I had numbers memorized. And all that, I had numbers memorized and all that kind of stuff. And um, I do not have that anymore. So I definitely need the pattern. Ooh, it is pouring. Can you hear that? It's raining really hard. It is very windy outside. I'm so excited! Um, and so, yeah, just had to relearn. Which happens to everybody, and there's nothing wrong with setting a project aside and like, not knowing where you are in your pattern, very valid, happens to everybody of any level of knitting. 
just been a long time. Um, but so for the um, Pearly Girls Yarn Shop anniversary, we had one of the trunk shows that we had was from Pearl Smith, and she does uh, freshwater pearl stitch markers, which are just absolutely beautiful. I she we had like so many like. Um, sets that you could buy but then also individual ones that you could kind of create your own kit which was super fun um and so i really wanted this bag but also saving for dfw because i know that will be a thing um i only got one stitch marker which is totally fine i and i got this little fresh water will you be able to see it will it focus it's kind of like a long pointy one and it's pink I thought that was super fun. So, just got the one. Oop. And I love it. So, um, before I didn't need a stitch marker where I had that stitch marker, I was able to just kind of like count and estimate, but that is no longer. Um, so, I'm using my new stitch marker for that, which is very nice because it is just like, ah, we're just freshening up this project. It's all good, it's all fine. Um, finally, yarn acquisitions. Let's talk about that real quick. I have a test knit. Surprise, surprise! Yeah, I have another test knit coming up, and um, I needed to get some yarn for it, so I got it um, last time I worked, which was Friday. And um, I haven't cast this on yet. I honestly don't know if we've gotten the pattern yet. So, either way. I do have the yarn though. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be using Barocco Dulce or Dolce? Dulce. Dulce? I don't know. Um, so it's like this very brushed, heathered, um, mohair y, fuzzy thing with the core that changes color. So it kind of gives it almost an iridescent look, which is just beautiful. Um, it is 50% cotton, 20% nylon, 16% alpaca, and 14% wool. This looks very lightweight. It is actually not. It is um, more of a worsted weight-ish. And I'm knitting this for mm, winter's weathers, winter's weather knits. Um, and this is the picture that she posted on her um, Instagram, but it's just gonna be like a a top, um, like a flowy cropped top with long sleeves, very snuggly, very cozy. Love it, super excited. Um, and yeah, so it's got some kind of fun stitch pattern to it. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, but I am hopefully going to be starting it soon. I need to double check uh, where the pattern is or if we have it yet. So that is very exciting. I got that yarn that will be cast on soon. Um, and then the second thing that I got from the trunk shows um, is a project bag from Rosen Seams. Elena, the name may sound familiar. I have two of her bags. Um, my Advent shawl is living in this one, and then my Weekender Light, which I haven't worked on, but is living in, also living in one of her bags. This one. And we got to have, I think it was her first trunk show, which is super exciting. So she sent us several, so she sent us several, um, different types of her bags and it was just such a fun time and I saw this pumpkin spice when I opened the box um, before and we were setting up and I saw the pumpkin spice one and just like general fallness and I was just in love. I needed this so badly. It's got a handle and it's also got a little carabiner on the inside which is pretty cool. It's got snaps, that's how it closes, very sturdy bottom. No soggy bottoms here. Haha, <laughs> it's a great British Bake Off joke. <laughs> so funny. Um, the inside is this beautiful plaid, and then, yeah, we just, just love it. So, Rosen Seams, um, 
Elena, also from Colorado. Just love <laughs> supporting people from Colorado, apparently. Um, and I'm just very excited to use this bag. Um, I had this yarn in here, so I'll probably use this bag for um, the time being um, for this project. It holds quite a lot. I mean, this holds, that's five skeins of yarn, six skeins of yarn. And there's still space. I mean, it's not completely full. Um, let's smash it down and yeah. So that's pretty nice, pretty good sized bag. So I think that's everything. We had a lot to talk about everybody, but we got through it. And I did finish that one row <laughs> of wavy wiggles. Goodness gracious. Try not to do that for next time. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for watching me experience the rain coming. Um, thanks for just being here and being you. Um, I have all the various social medias. I have show notes. I have yarn store information. If you have any questions or if I happen to forget something or whatever, or if you just want to say hello, please please feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I would love to say hi. In addition to that, um, I, again, I will be at DFW Fiber Fest. I will have pins. Um, there's nothing formal. I'm just going to be wandering around and shopping like everybody else with my mom and my sister. So if you happen to see me or if you uh, are there and you want to like meet up or whatever, send me a message and let me know. I would love to say hi and love to give you a pin if you would like. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't done any project planning yet. Um, that is on my to-do list this week or next week. We will see. We're still going for every other week for my recording schedule for now. Um, just because things are busy and I'm sure things are busy for you too. I feel like a lot of people are really busy right now. So just gonna kind of take it chill. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, work on my laundry and make some cookies. And I don't think it's rainy, raining anymore, but enjoy the rainy weather. And also I need to make the bed because the cat has finally gotten off the bed. So that is important. He's just too cute. I can't stand. I just can't move him when he's sleeping on the bed. He's just too cute. Anyway, I hope you've had a wonderful couple weeks. I hope you continue to have a next, the, I hope you continue to have good next couple of weeks, whatever the phrasing is for that. Um, if you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. Let's remember the resting and doing things that bring you joy are just as important as being productive. They're also being productive. And we do not define ourselves or our worth based on how much crafting we get done. That is a thing I have to remind myself daily, especially looking at Instagram. I'm in such a bad, like, it's not bad. It's just a thing <laughs> of just scrolling Instagram, which I know everybody does, but it feels particularly bad right now. And there's just, I, there's a lot of comparing going on with me right now. And it's just like, uh, I can't do that much. I am clearly not very good. I feel like I talk about this every week. Um, don't define yourself on how much. You're so close, we're so close. Don't define yourself on how much or little you get done. That is not the point. That is not the point of crafting. Um, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for being you. You are wonderful, you are enough. And I will see you all in two weeks, hopefully with maybe some more finished objects. Wouldn't that be incredible? I'm not going to say anything of what I want to get finished because I really have no clue. The idea of trying to figure that out is very overwhelming to me right now. So I'm not. I'm going to go make some cookies and enjoy the incoming rain if it comes back. So <laughs> with that, I will see you all in two weeks. Bye!